memory and anger. Welcome back to the regular broadcast. Today we got the announcement that New World would in fact be delayed again. If you haven't heard the news already, I highly recommend you go check it out. But today, I want to talk about what we know so far for these new expeditions or PvE dungeons they just announced. They describe these as 5 player adventures that are instants and take us to the darkest corners of Eternum. We'll be facing dire threats, learning more about the source of corruption, expose the angry Earth's ulterior motives, which I didn't know they had, and also reveal the deeper menace behind the Lost, which just recently we analyzed some lore that pointed to the Siren Queen herself. Now what might happen though is they could potentially introduce this character either as an arena boss like we speculated before, or they might develop their own version of raids and put Isabella in those too. Now this very first expedition is what they showcased during the developer video and in the kit they provided. During the video we can see in the distance what appears to be the Shattered Obelisk. Just judging by the terrain and location alone, this is most likely located either in Everfall or Windsward. It's on the south side of the obelisk, so I'm betting it's around Windsward. And just northeast of Windsward is known as Amrine Temple. This is a location that people spent some time around in previous iterations. It was an area filled with ancient guardians, and was pretty decent location-wise for usually being surrounded by regular berries and corrupted breaches. And to close those, we needed to use the Corruption's Bane, which is also something we'll use during these dungeons too. We can see in multiple parts how it'll be used to open up casings, some of the doorways sealed off by the ancients, things like that. There even seems to be other devices like this one, which is under the name Glyphgate, in the creator kit. And in one of the clips, the characters are shown using this platform to activate a bridge, which is good to see that there will be different types of mechanics we'll be encountering during these dungeons. Along with these, sometimes we might need to translate text from another language in order to progress, or even gather an item like this candlestick that we need to push further. It shows that these dungeons have a lot of effort put into them, which is so often one of the missing things on this side of MMOs. This also seems like another way they're going to deliver the lore and story to people. In a recent interview, it was confirmed that more cinematics or visual storytelling are on the table, but this will be a very nice addition to that. For the enemies we'll be fighting in this one, they seem to be from the Lost Faction, specifically the Withered. We've seen the Withered Giants in here, the Wraiths, and even some of the Withered Ghouls. There's also some resources being gathered here, so in future ones, we might see other types we can make use of. My only hope at the moment is that we get decent rewards for doing them, like maybe a small chunk of experience per dungeon and maybe even gold too. Doing that would make it a more lucrative piece of content. Plus, since they're designing more of these, this is an opportunity to create a new progression method to enhance the leveling experience. So if they have this dungeon at 25, then another at 35 to 40 that maybe focuses on the lost and undead, then another at 50 to 55 for the corrupted, that would be really good. And at this point, I have no doubt that they're probably doing raids in the future. But I'm still a huge fan of the idea that they could implement open world dynamic events. For the level requirement, like I said a second ago, this appears to be minimum level 25. I say that judging off the characters levels in the instance, but also because they actually show the level of these mobs in a few of these clips. During this I also noticed that we do have a whirlwind ability for the great axe so I'm really happy about that. Plus the ancients do have their own language as we can see from the translation interaction, that'll be nice to explore from a lore perspective. But in the meantime, we should keep track of this symbol above the door just in case they tease new dungeon locations in the future. But with that, that's everything we know about the expedition so far. Let me know if I missed anything and also, I'm curious how you guys feel about this feature being added into the game. Leave it all in the comments below, have a wonderful night or day, and farewell.